Do you wake up several times at night to go to the toilet to pee? That is a sign of an overreactive bladder. Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Messi Mary, popularly known as a nurse with a difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for all my viewers. Today, we are going to be talking about overreactive bladder. Yes, I believe you've heard about overreactive human, hyperactive guy, hyperactive man. But this particular video is not the individual that is hyperactive or overreactive, but rather the bladder is hyperactive. The bladder is overreactive. And that is what we are going to be discussing today. And I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of ways to deal with overreactive bladder. First of all, I want to ask you this question. Do you wake up several times at night to go to the toilet to pee? That is a sign of an overreactive bladder. The second question is, do you frequently go to the toilet during the day? Like we're talking about eight times a day. You're going to the toilet frequently, frequency. You notice, oh, I'm always going to the toilet. I'm not talking about you taking a lot of water and you are going to the toilet. That's normal. When you take a lot of water, definitely you have to use the toilet frequently so when there's frequency in using the toilet like more than eight times a day that could be a sign of an overreactive bladder and also do you have the urgent need to urinate in such a way that you can't even control it so when the urgency comes you have to go to the toilet as soon as possible that could be a sign of an overreactive bladder and that urgency can lead to urgency urinary incontinence in the sense that you can't control your bladder. You have to start seeing some droppings of urine in your pants, in your bolsters, and sometimes you have to use pad because of how severe it is. So if you are having these four signs I just listed, that could be that you are battling with overreactive bladder. What are the four signs I just listed? First is frequency of urination. The second is urgency. The third is urgency urinary incontinence. And the fourth is nocturia, which simply means pain frequently at night. So these are the signs and symptoms of what? Of overreactive bladder. You may want to ask this question, how does it affect you? When it comes to urinary incontinence, it affects every aspect of your life. It affects how you concentrate. It affects how you function because you just want to go to the toilet. Sometimes you are scared of hanging out with your friends. Your social life is being impaired. You are scared of taking a long trip. You are scared of entering the plane. You are scared of going on a long vacation. You are scared of having fun in the park because the next thing in your mind is, where do I get the nearby toilet to pass urine? And when you are battling with urine overreactive bladder, it's also expensive. Because you have to invest in buying parts, in buying, um, you understand, in buying incontinence parts to help you deal with it while going on a long distance travel, while, while even doing your normal activity to avoid being distracted. And when you go out, you have to spend on looking for a private toilet to go and urinate when there is no public toilet out there. You can see that having an overreactive bladder affects the normal functioning. So now I'm going to be sharing with you how to deal with an overreactive bladder. So now let's talk about the causes of overreactive bladder. The first one I have to share with you is age. Yes, aging puts you at risk of going down with overreactive bladder. But that does not mean it is normal to have overreactive bladder when you age. So if you are aging and you find yourself battling with overreactive bladder, I'll ask you to speak with your doctor for proper information and guidance on how to manage it. Then the second cause of overreactive bladder is being overweight. So if you are overweight, you are obese, that puts you at risk of going down with overreactive bladder. Yes, people that are overweight are three to four times more likely to go down with overreactive bladder when compared to those that are not overweight. Then the third cause is multiple pregnancy and also vaginal delivery. Multiple pregnancy and vaginal delivery. Other medical conditions that can cause overreactive bladder include diabetes. Yes, diabetes is one of the cause of 
frequency in nutrition, frequency in passing urine. Diabetes is one of the cause of waking up multiple times at night to pass urine. So that is a reason for an overreactive bladder. And another medical condition is depression. Depression is not left out. Another medical condition is neurological. Neurological conditions such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson disease, spinal cord injury, those can cause um, overreactive bladder. Then surgeries are not left out. Have you had past surgeries down there in the past? That could be the reason for your overreactive bladder. And for those that are on medications, especially for blood pressure, the diuretics that helps to like um, take excess fluid out of the body, that could be the reason why you are going to the toilet frequently and consistently. So then that takes us to the treatment for overreactive bladder. In terms of the way to stop overreactive bladder, the first one I have to share with you is weight loss. You remember when I was talking about the causes, I talked about weight gain, obesity is one of the causes of overreactive bladder. So if you're able to lose at least 8% of your weight, that is going to go a long way to help you sort your overreactive bladder. Then that takes me to the second ways to stop it, and that is avoiding things that are likely going to irritate the bladder. Yes, you may want to ask, what are the things that irritate the bladder? Alcohol does that. Caffeine does that. Spicy food does that. So if there is a way you can take that out from your daily intake, that is going to go a long way. I'm not telling you to stop that totally. You can take one out at a time and see how your body adjusts to it and see if there is any improvement. And if there is none, you can decide to go back to how it used to be. It's all a personal decision. Then the third one I have to share with you is reduce your water intake, especially before you go to bed. Let me tell you why. So when you take excessive water, definitely there's going to be this urgency, this frequency to pass urine. So when you reduce your water intake, that is going to go a long way. It's good to stay hydrated. It's good to take enough water. But taking excessive water can cause your bladder to be overreactive, can cause your bladder to want to pass more urine because there's a lot of urine saved up in the bladder. So the fourth point I have to share with you is avoid constipation yes why am i telling you to avoid constipation you know the rectum and the bladder they are close to each other the rectum is where fecal matter are stored i mean your poo that is where fecal that's where your poo is stored it is stored in the rectum why your bladder is where urine is stored so if you're having constipation your rectum is going to be filled up with poo right your rectum is going to be filled up with poo and it will be pressing on the bladder so if that rectum is pressing on the bladder definitely you're going to be having this urgency this frequency to always go to the toilet to pass urine then the fifth one i have to share with you is quit smoking i've always said this in my video over time that smoking is not good for your general health it's not good for your general webbing smoking does not only affect you or put you at risk for overreactive bladder but it also puts you at risk of developing prostate cancer. And you know, when that prostate is enlarged, definitely you're still going to have more of overreactive bladder. Then another point I have to share with you, which is the sixth point, is pelvic muscle exercise therapy. So most of the times, they will advise you to speak with a trained um, gym instructor that have ideal in terms of pelvic muscles exercise to treat overreactive bladder. And are going to help your muscles to retrain itself to prevent you from going to toilet frequently. Then the seventh, eight, nine, ten point I have to share with you is more or less similar because they are the use of medications. Yes, medications can help the bladder relax and that medications are going to be prescribed by your doctors. You have your bladder pacemaker, the same way you have heart pacemaker that has been inserted in the heart. That's the way you're going to be having a bladder pacemaker to help control the urine. Then we're also going to be having some bladder botox uh, bladder Botox are more or less like um, they are placed there for like 69 months and every 69 months you have to go and change and do some you understand so we have the bladder Botox we have the percutaneous tibial nerve stimulator and we also have the airwing which is an implant so these points I listed last all of them are going to be given to you by your doctor you have to see your doctor to get this depending on how severe this overreactive bladder 
is. But if you follow the first steps, the first steps, steps I gave you, that is going to go a long way to also help. All right. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and also don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. Before I go, I just want to let you know that if you're having any doubts about your head, it is better for you to speak with your doctor and your doctor tells you, oh, nothing is wrong, than for you to assume nothing is wrong and something is wrong. Thank you very much and see you in our next video. Bye.